So hello everyone and welcome to the platform Women in Tech uh, interview. We are going to be talking to the women who are going to be speaking SQL Bits conference. This conference is going to be in Wales, England uh, between the dates March 14th and 18th, 2023. There is also a virtual option to choose to attend from other parts of the world if you choose to. Um, it's one of the really good conferences for uh, SQL related stuff and uh, we highly recommend people attending. Um, in this interview, we are going to be talking with Trey Keno. She has two sessions at this conference and we will be talking to her on both of those sessions coming up. The timings to attend these sessions, these are on English time. They are as listed and we will also have them in the show notes. Um, our sponsor for this talk is SQL Taylor Consulting, a good friend and uh, an ally, Joe Fleming. Uh, Joe will be donating $20 to Girls Who Code for every guest whom we talk to. Um, he has his own remote DBA shop and he is a great person to get in touch with if you're looking for any kind of consulting help with your environment. Thank you, Joe, for doing this. All right, let's get started. All right, Tracy, how about your first talk? The um, well, I, the first one I listed was the DBHX one. So, um, okay, okay, you can talk that. That's fine. <laughs> so, so that one's uh, use the DBHX. Before we get into your talks, why don't you tell us about you? Who are you? Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. That was stuck while I went in. I mean, everybody knows you, but you know, just take a second. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm I'm Tracy Bajiano. I work for Sound Physicians out of Tacoma, Washington, um, as a database architect. Uh, I usually go by the title database superhero though, because like one one of Mala's coworkers gave me that job title when I worked at Channel Advisor, and the website's easier to remember than my last name, DatabaseSuperhero.com. Mm -hmm. They gave it to me because of my foster care work more than my database work, but hey. <laughs> all right you've that's been all in awesome this stuff community too. for a long time so most for most people you're a familiar face yeah so now what are your talks going to be about <laughs> thank you <Beth. laughs> all right so so the first one i was going to talk about was my dbhx one um so it's about i'm going to talk about it because you can use it to keep the security auditors off your butt it's the way i worded it so like i wrote all of the CIS checks for SQL Server into DBA checks because, like, why not? You know, third-party tools are a pain in the butt, in my opinion. Every time my auditors ran it, it was flagging stuff that it should filter out, like startup store procedures for replication in SSIS. Yes, we have startup store procedures. I can't control it. They're part of the system. <laughs> it was flagging unsafe CLR for, like, geography data types. Big deal. When we go to 2017, they'll go away. Don't tell me about it. <laughs> and my my security compliance team, they couldn't run the right version of it against the right version of SQL Server. So they were just flagging false stuff. So I, I put in DBA checks for the world to use. Then, you know, you can write your own checks. And so that's you, why you're a superhero. But you can also write your own checks. So like if you have a different security compliance thing you need to meet, like STIG, because I've had a project to put STIG out there, but now I don't need to meet STIG. So like I haven't done it yet. Plus Rob's putting PESTER 5 in there. So I figured I'd wait until he gets done so he doesn't have to rewrite a whole bunch of stuff. So you can write your own checks to meet a different security compliance. And then you can you can be your own hero at work. So, so who is the, who is the best audience for this, Tracy? Anybody that's got to meet a security compliance at work and it has to do with auditors. This this way you can run it against your system yourself. Know if know if you're compliant with a particular specification, and you can show your boss you're you're ready to go, and you don't have to worry about a third party tool. If your your security compliance team uses a third party tool, fine. You you know you're ready to go yourself, and you can deal with them later. Hmm. What about the what about the second talk? Uh, my favorite one. Hmm. <laughs> now security is kind of cool, but you know. Um, 
we're dealing with mental health, you know, I've been talking about that for like three years. So my, my next step up is how leaders can help their employees with their mental health. So I'm co-presenting that with Eugene and I'm not even going to try to say his last name because I'll butcher it. You know, everybody knows Eugene I'm with too. You. So. <laughs> Sequel G. So. My, my, I think my lingo is right, but you're right. <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm I'm bad with names. Like, if it's not an easy name to pronounce, like, yeah, you don't want Andrews. To Andrews is easy to pronounce. <laughs> yeah, see, I can do that. So you know, <laughs> it took me a while to learn how to pronounce my new last name when I got married. So you know, <laughs> so um, yeah, uh, we're we're hoping to cram a lot into 50 minutes though, because like, yeah, there's a lot to do. So I, I figured this was the next step up because my, my presentation was all about helping yourself and, you know, how you could get help. And just a tiny portion was what your employer could do to help make your environment a little bit better. Mm -hmm. But we're, we're cramming a lot in here. I don't even know if I'm going to get to it all. If not, this is going to be a great 75 minute session somewhere. <laughs> and you'll have some extra slides to look at and a whole bunch of links are already available out on GitHub with my, my little repository. Mm -hmm. But um, we're going to cover everything from how, how you can help reduce stigma in the workplace by little things you can do as, as a leader, all the way down to, you know, how, how to manage a crisis with, with an employee. So there's a, there's a lot of key, key things you can do in here and, you know, how to make a wellness plan with an employee, what to do with an employee that has to take leave, you know, how, how to actually handle that. My, my, every time I've ever taken leave, my, my, my employer has been like totally hands off, doesn't know how to handle me when I come back from work. And it's just like, it feels all weird and stuff. So, you know, it's mm. going to, you know, help you with how to talk to an employee and, and all that stuff that's all touchy stuff and make you feel more comfortable doing those type of things. Eugene actually presented on how he copes with depression at summit. And somebody mm -hmm. actually came up and asked him how, as a manager, he could help an employee. So mm -hmm. he sent them to me mm -hmm. and we met at the Red Gate party. I said, stay tuned. <laughs> I gave him some tips, but I told him, stay tuned. A longer presentation is coming soon. Not knowing it was getting into bits, but I knew one day I was going to be presenting it. So if I, if I work with somebody like that, would it be of use to me too? Like I'm not their boss, but I'm aware that they are, you know, I can help them. How would it be of use to me? Um, I, I think so. Um, there's certain things that would be of use to you, but I, I gave some of those tips in my other presentation, how you could talk to somebody. Right. Um, this, this is, there'll be parts of it that will be there because there, there's tips in there about how to openly talk about mental health in the workplace and mental illness in general and how to prevent issues. Um, right. It kind of gets touchy when you start talking to an employee about issues if they're not open about it, though, because if they're um, not open about it, you don't uh -huh. want to cross a bridge and make them go to HR. Right. <laughs> you know, so you'll have to kind of, you know, balance it out there. But if, if you're if, if it's an open space where people talk about it, that it, they're, at the very beginning, there'll be, be things that that you'll be able to pick up on that'll be helpful. But once they get into a certain area and it starts getting, you know, private, you know, the, those type things will probably be more towards the leader that's talking to them and stuff. But if the leader starts at the beginning on our second topic, just opening up the, the workplace where people are open about opening, uh, talking about it, then that opens it up more for everybody to be able to talk about it. And that's mm -hmm. what we're hoping for is that you know, everybody feels safe and we get rid of the stigma around it. So people don't feel like they have to hide. Because mm. that's the worst part about having mental health issues is having to hide it. Yeah. So Tracy, are you presenting in person or are your virtual sessions? Oh, in person. Who cares about COVID? Some people, some people I know need to, but I'm just like, I already had it. If I get it again, it'll suck, but... I, I want to be around views. people. I can't wait I want, to see you. I want to be around people. I enjoy no, I, so much. I, I get that. I get, I get that, and I support you there. For I, I know some people need need to prevent prevent getting it because of underlying health conditions. But I'm one of those people that you know I'm I'm an introvert that needs to be around people. Some some. So, I, I enjoy Thank something you. way too much. So I'm looking forward to bits. What's, what's your costume going to be? 
I, I don't know because I just, my fun fact was I know nothing about Dungeons and Dragons at all besides like the name. <laughs> I asked for tips on Twitter and I didn't really. And somebody gave me like a link to a beginner book to read. And I was like, that's a lot of work. So, um, yeah, just, I think I'm just, just going to dye my hair an appropriate color. Just Google <laughs> Dungeons colors. and Dragons costume ideas, and you'll get all kinds of things. I'm gonna. Be I, I think I just buy a T-shirt that has something on it and dye my hair to appropriate colors because there's orange on this side and purple. Oh, on this that's side. cool. So, so if I do two oh, different yeah. colors and then get me an appropriate T-shirt, I think that's a costume. Hmm. Right. I've got a really cool black cape and black boots and my skeleton key that unlocks all of the locks. Oh, how and nice. I know. See, I, I, I'm, I'm bringing a really small suitcase. Like, I'm going to have to do yeah, laundry while I'm there. <laughs> like, I'm, I'll have to do laundry while I'm there. That's how small I'm packing for 10 days. Oh, I and I'm bringing a backpack and a carry-on. I'm, I'm not letting go no, of my luggage back, this time. Back, backpack in, in in one suitcase yeah carry on that's just it uh they'll have to steal my suitcase i call it stealing when they take it from you at the gate stealing yes totally stealing stealing it and checking in that's stealing yes so yeah I, I may just squeak out one one from london i paid a little bit a little bit extra for it but i was like yeah i don't know it takes forever to do a layover somewhere and yeah, I don't want to do a layover. So I was like, oh, Frisky, they just travel Frisky travel. sent me a flight that said it was 300 bucks and it had a connecting flight, but it wasn't. France Air lied. When you went to their website, it was not 300 bucks, no matter which way you did it. My favorite a travel lot. hack these days is um, staying at the airport hotel the night before. So like when you when you leave the hotel, you're at the airport. There's no travel involved getting to the airport. There's no nightmare of missing your train or your no, I leave my hotel room and I walk downstairs and I'm at the airport. It's marvelous. I love it. Thank you, Tracy. We really appreciate your time. Everybody listening, make sure that you hit up Tracy Stocks, one of the two listed if you can. It will be a good use of your time, I promise. Thank you. Thank you.